Good morning, Adam, Diffie, Delta, Polly, Denominator. Today we'll be talking about how to add fractions that are alike and some that are not alike. Let's go to our Sally board and see what Parallelaland has in store for us today. Adding fractions. One moment, please. I have a basket filled with apples and oranges. If I take out two apples and then I take out one more, how many apples do I have? Diffie? Three apples. Of course. Now let's say I take one orange and another orange. How many oranges do I have? Two oranges. Now let's say I take out two apples and one orange. Polly, how many apples do I have? Two. How many oranges? One. Right. How many apple oranges do I have? I don't think that's a word. A plantis? That's not a word either. Orangles? <laughs> nope. So let's see what's happening here. If I add an apple to an apple, I get more apples. If I add an orange and an orange, I get oranges. If I add an apple to an orange, I get an apple and an orange. Since they are different fruits, they don't combine. We don't get a new fruit. Same thing applies in math. We can only add like things. That makes sense. Got it. That makes sense. I'm hungry now. We'll extend this concept to fractions. Fractions aren't so bad. You just have to remember one key thing. You can only add things that are alike. Now let's divide something into parts and see how the same idea applies to fractions. Let's divide this strip into five equal parts. Together, these five parts make up the whole strip. So one part out of the five would be written as one over five. We say one-fifth. If I take two of the five, I would have... Two-fifths. Perfect. Now let's take a few of these pieces and add them. What? What? Did you call on me? No, I said Adam, not Adam. Oh. But since you're clearly paying attention, let me ask you a question. If I take two of these fifths and add another one, how many do I have? Three. Three what? three of those pieces. What is the value of each piece? One-fifth. So three of them would be... Can anybody help Adam? Three-fifths. Yes! Let's try another one. Adam, what is two-fifths plus two-fifths? Is it four-fifths? Does everyone agree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Good. Let's try one more. What is two-fifths plus three-fifths? Five-fifths? But wait, isn't that just the whole thing? Good observation. So five out of five is one whole thing, right? Now let's take note of a couple of things. When adding like things, fifths in this case, we add the tops together and keep the bottoms the same. The correct terminology for the top and the bottom is the numerator and denominator. Also, if we had the same thing over the same thing, like, we always get one. 
The number 1 has a very special property that when it's multiplied by any number, we get back that same number. For example, 3 times 1 is 3. 10 times 1 is 10. 1 third times 1 is 1 third. Now, let's work with fractions that do not have the same denominator. Let's add 1 fourth and 1 third. Any ideas? Can we add the tops and bottoms and get 2 sevenths? Let's see what would happen. We'll take 1 fourth and 1 third and put them together. Let's compare this length with the sevenths. Do we get 2 sevenths? No. 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 Not even close. So it doesn't look like we can add the tops and the bottoms. Didn't you say we could only add like things? Yes. What does that mean for this problem? You can't add fourths and thirds. So there's no answer, right? No, there is an answer. We have to be clever about it, though. Somehow we need to make the fourths and the thirds into the same things. What is the smallest number that 3 and 4 divide into with no remainder? 12? Good! Since 3 and 4 will divide into 12 evenly, we should use twelfths as our like thing. We're going to need to multiply each fraction by something to get 12 in the denominators. We could multiply the first fraction by 4 and the second one by 3. That's almost correct. We can't just go around multiplying things by 3 and 4. We would change their values. Remember that we can multiply any number by 1 without changing it. That means we need to multiply these fractions by something in the form of 1 that gets us to 12s. Let me introduce you to a friend of mine who can help us with this. Noid! You right? Class, this is the number 1 in disguise. Noid for short. Hi, Hi Noid. Noid! Number 1 in disguise, Noid! Hey kids, <laughs> look what I can do! Wow. Cool! Cool! Noid is going to help us add these fractions. We've already determined that we need twelfths. To make one-third into a twelfth, we need to multiply it by one. Noid, can you help us? Sure thing! Yay! Yay. So then, one-third times four-fourths is... Four-twelfths! Right! Can you help us with one-fourth now? So what is... Three-twelfths. Good. Let's put it all together now. Anyone? Seven-twenty-fourths. No, it's seven-twelfths. Why? Because if you add twelfths, you get twelfths. You don't get something like 24th. Couldn't have said it better myself. Can we try another one? I'm not sure I get it yet. Of course. Why don't you give me two fractions to add? 127 over 317 plus... How about I give you two fractions to add? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll use 1 eighth and 3 fourths. Let's add them. What? Are all these things alike? They're fractions. Yes, they're fractions. Are they like fractions? No, one is an eighth and the other one is a fourth. Let's make them alike. Delta, what is the smallest number that both eight and four go into? Um, four? Not quite. Eight doesn't divide into four. Four is less than eight. Since four divides into eight, wouldn't eight be the answer? Very good. So does everyone agree that we should rewrite these fractions as eighths? Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, no, Ed. Ha! What kind of one should I be now? Let's look at one eighth first. Diffie, what do we need to multiply the denominator by to get eighths? Isn't it already an eighth? We don't need to do anything to it. Right. What about three fourths? Four times two is eight. So we need to multiply by 2. But remember, we just can't multiply a number by 2. That changes it. We need to multiply it by 1. A number 1 in disguise. Number 1 in disguise, Noid. 
Look what I can do. Yay! Yay! So, what do we have now? Six eighths. Good. Let's put it all together now. One eighth plus three fourths is the same as one eighth plus six eighths, which is seven eighths. He got it right. Got it right. Good, job, Adam. Good job, Adam. Nice job, Adam. Does anyone have any questions before we leave for the day? I think I got no, it. I think, I, think I, got I got it. Let's thank Noid for being here today. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks Noid. Noid. Bye, kids. See you soon. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Parallel Land. I'm Sally. And I have to excuse me. Man, I'm this is today. Cut! Don't use your real voice. Try something else. Cut! Adam, wake up! <laughs> Hello? No, I can't talk right now. I'm busy working. I'll call you later. Bye. Tell, tell Mama I said hi. <laughs>